There are many wonderful ways to convey your syllabus to your students. A gold standard has been the PDF format, since it can be rendered really well across browsers and computers. Then you have the Google Doc, which allows you to share a link to the syllabus with your students, and you can put that syllabus into multiple Canvas courses and make live updates. Then there is a liquid syllabus, which basically means making your syllabus available as a web page. One of the benefits of that is you can include videos, as well as text and images. It can show up well on both a computer screen, on a tablet, or on a phone. This particular one was created using Google Sites, but you might also create something like this in Canvas. Either way, the goal is for it to render well across devices. Elements of a liquid syllabus would include some type of banner, a short welcome message with the video, and can include sections such as how this course works, your teaching philosophy, a pact between you and the students in terms of expectations that are shared, an equity statement, what students can expect the very first week of school, tips for success, how they can get their questions answered, as well as providing basic syllabus information. It's especially helpful to make this available to your students prior to the start of class so that they can familiarize themselves with the materials and be better prepared. Your typical syllabus information that you can include on a separate page if you wish might be the catalog description, student learning outcomes, required materials, any policies and procedures you haven't already touched upon, and if your class has an unusual workflow, you might also make that clear to your students. And finally, how the course grade is calculated. Additionally, some students may need a PDF version of the syllabus to share with the colleges that they're transferring to. And so it can be helpful to have an option to view your syllabus as a PDF. There are many ways to create a liquid syllabus. One such way is to use Google Sites, which does a great job of rendering your liquid syllabus on a computer screen, tablet, or phone. To get started, go to the Google site and then click on your Gmail or the sign in button to log into your Gmail account. Then enter your password. Once you're logged in, go ahead and do a Google search for Google Sites. And then click on the Google Sites sign in and that will bring you to the Google Sites template. Next, Click on Start a New Site. Take a look at Michelle Pekonsky Brock's Liquid Syllabus. It is beautiful. She has given us a lot of time and consideration. She's put in videos, amazing images. The banners look wonderful. But something like this can take a long time to create. And just like when you make an online course, you first put something out there and then the next semester you make improvements upon it and you continue to own it and improve upon it. That is my strategy as you tackle creating a liquid syllabus. Don't try to do it all at once. When starting your liquid syllabus, keep it initially as simple as possible. So here's our, our course banner or our, our web page banner. It's gonna be at the top of each page. You can choose an image to go behind whatever text you provide. And so Google Sites gives you some basic background images that you can use. Or you can search and look for something uh, for yourself. What I chose to use was a, a whiteboard. But you see all these other images? I spent a considerable amount of time looking at other possible ways to create a banner. In the end, I've decided that I would save that for another day and just keep it simple with a, a whiteboard as a background. Then for your banner message, put in something just fairly basic. A welcome, perhaps your course name, the prefix, the college, and your name. Next, you'll have your welcome message. To add that, just double click on the white space down below and you'll get this dial. If you click on the little text TT in the middle of that circle, it'll open up a little text box for you. And that's where you can then type in your welcome message. Later on, 
you can come back and add your video that will go alongside this welcome message. Next, we'll add a header that will separate our welcome message from the next component of our syllabus. To add the header, again, just double click on this white space, choose the text option in the middle, type in your header, and then here is something interesting. If you click on the painting palette to the left, it has section background, and you can choose image, and from there you can choose select image. So just like with the course banner, you can select some background image and find something that works for you. And then Google Sites will adjust that background to make the header pop out. The thing I want to point out is that this text here, it has the type heading. So it's not normal text. Instead, it's heading. And that's going to benefit uh, students that would be relying upon a screen reader. It will know that this is a header and it can jump from header to header. Then you put in your text regarding how the course works. <laughs> if it was only that easy to type, right? And now we make our next section. So again, we double click. I have here my teaching philosophy. I'm making sure that it's of type heading. And again, I'll select the background. And I chose to keep these backgrounds all the same. But at some future point, I may come back and personalize them the way that I see that being done on this liquid syllabus. So how you do it is totally up to you. And then you can put in your teaching philosophy. And remember that each of these sections is optional. Now, when I go to put in my teaching philosophy, you can see it says here normal text, which is different from when it said header. There we go, teaching philosophy. Add in another header. So again, it's of type heading. Put in the background. Said I have the text in two separate boxes. So this appears on a computer screen, they'll appear side by side. But if it's on a mobile device, then whatever is on the left will appear on top and whatever is on the right will appear below it. To be able to do that, again, just double click, get the text. Type in the what you can expect from me. And then click on the border. And you'll see the uh, arrow pointing left, right. And drag that to the halfway point. And then in your space on the right, double click again, click the text, and then type in the remaining text to appear on the right side. Now we have the equity statement. So again, double click, text, put in the equity, equity statement, it's of type heading, adjusting the background. I'll double click, choose text, type it in. And I want to point out that my striving together, support and success, what you can expect from me and what I can expect from you, as well as the equity, that I borrowed heavily from what Michelle Pekonsky uh, Brock already had. I added to it, made a little bit my own, but it's heavily based upon what's already there. Since this is going out prior to the start of class, we can let students know, hey, what is a great way to prepare for that first week of classes? So that'll be our next section. So again, double click, click on the text, type in your header, and you'll notice this time that week one success kit is of type heading, but then below it, it's still gonna be part of this banner for the heading, it's in normal text. Click on the palette, go to image, select image, choose that background image, and now we can add in our text. So I'm gonna have four columns of text. What students should do before their class, their Zoom class on Tuesday, what they'll do on Tuesday, what they should do by Thursday, and what they should do after the class on Thursday. So to add those four columns, I'll start off by just double clicking, choosing text, type in what I have for my first column, and then going to go ahead and on that far right border, click, drag, and make this about one fourth the size of the screen. And again, on a mobile device, rather than it's appearing left to right, it'll instead appear top to bottom. Here's our next column. 
double click, click on the text, type in what's expected, and size it. Continuing on with our third column and our fourth column. Additionally, for this whole section here, I want it to pop out a little bit. So I'm going to provide a background image behind it. Click on the palette, image, select image. And I'm going to go for the one showing clouds. Here we go. Because this is an online class and I need to comply with state law, I'm also letting students know that they need to post in the welcome discussion board as a way to keep their seat in this online Zoom class. All right, then we have our tips for success section. Again, it has a heading part as well as what I've got down below in normal text. Turn it into a banner. So to add the tips, double click, click the text, type in your tips. My tips were based both upon advice that students in my prior classes have given future students, as well as my own insights as well. Of course, it's important for students to know how to contact us, whether it's for questions that relate to how they did on an exam, or if it's just general questions about a module. So we have that how to get your questions answered section. And for this section, we're going to have three sections. The first section is when students need to get some individual help. So I'm going to make this about a third of the width. At other times, students may have a more general question. And sometimes their question may not be specific to the course itself. Now, while there are several elements of a syllabus so far, in many ways, this is primarily functioning as a welcome message. So I want to let students know where they can get some of that basic syllabus information, as well as logging to the class or getting assistance with Canvas. So I'll give them a heads up of what is included in the basic syllabus info. And at that point, we have completed the first page of our syllabus. And this might be all that you choose to provide your students. You may uh, add to this later as the class progresses. Uh, some of the more basic syllabus information, or you could choose to have it all up front and ready for a student. Now I'll walk you through how to, if you want, to create a second page with that basic syllabus information. So I'll go to Pages, and I'll click on the plus button here, New Page. And this one I'll call Basic Syllabus Information, or info. And where it says home, that's our initial page, I'm going to change that to instead just simply say welcome. because That's more my welcome message. Then there's pages. And this allows you to toggle between the different pages you've made. So I'll go to the basic syllabus information. And here's our banner for our website background. And where it says basic syllabus information, I'll again just have it present uh, human development, Cycle 121, Miracosta College, Dr. Robert Kelly. Okay, so what to include in that basic information? So you can start off with the course description and again, highlight it and make sure that it says heading. And you can adjust the font size and type of font if you wish. And then I chose to kind of change up the, uh, the background images, this time going for the uh, laptop computer on a desk image. And the banner takes a little segment of that, kind of makes it pop a little bit. And then again, just double click text. And I'm going to put in the catalog description of the course. I mean, use this course description as kind of like a, a larger header for other things that come below. So now I'm going to add in the next section. And this will be my student learning outcomes. So double click, text, pasting it in, add it as heading. And for the background, I'm going to go ahead and choose something a little bit different. I'm going to have student learning outcomes. I'll put in my student learning outcomes, which you know I can grab from my existing syllabus. 
Then we have the required materials. And when you add anything to this, keep in mind it's, it's a website. So you can have in it links that students can click on uh, to go to that particular site. Then adding in the policies and procedures. Again, making sure it says heading here. Choosing in the background. And then putting in the policies and procedures. I'll go ahead and double click, add text. And here I'm going to have the particular policy in bold. And I'm going to have this as two columns, the policy name on the left, and then the policy itself going on the right. To add the policy again, just double click, choosing text. Anytime during the semester, you can come in if you need to and update your syllabus to add greater clarity to it. And then wherever you've linked to it, it will also be updated, just like a, a Google uh, document would be. So I put in the academic honesty, but I have to remember to size it. <laughs> I was initially trying to size it by clicking over here, but my academic honesty policy, it's already sized. Here's the, the text. This larger rectangle is the section. So I'm going to click inside of it, add text, and then there is my policy. And of course, uh, policies that you include, some of them will be standardized policies across the college, and some of them may be more specific to your class. So again, this is showing you another way of formatting information on your site. So this is using the two-column approach as a way to make each of these policies and procedures pop out. Now I'm adding a, another header, and that's because my class is a little bit unusual in terms of its workflow. And so I really want to bring the students' attention to it so that if they look over this, they know what they're getting into when they sign up for my class. And there, we've got the course grade section. The last part of Liquid Syllabus is to add buttons to help the students to navigate. So I'm going to go back to the welcome page. I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom, and we'll add in some buttons here. To add a button, we go over to where it says insert. And these are all the different things that we can insert. I'm going to insert a button, give it a name, and the link will be to the next page, the basic syllabus info page. And I'll click insert, and I can widen it to about such size. I also want to give students the opportunity to log directly into Canvas to our course from this page. So I'll add another button. And I need the link to our course in Canvas. Here's the course in Canvas. I'll just copy this link. I'm highlighting it, doing Control C or Command C to copy. And then here in the link, I can do Control V or Command V to paste it. And then with this new button, I want it to be in the same row. So I'm just clicking on it and dragging it. And I click on it once to get the little handles around it. I'm going to make it wider. Then you can think about where to send students if they need help. For example, logging into the Canvas course. So you can create another button, give it a name. And then in terms of where to send them, you're going to need to do some of your own research. I recommend sending them to this particular site, uh, tick.miracosa.edu forward slash canvas dash support. It has uh, information helpful to both faculty and students, such as uh, the phone number that they can call, some getting started uh, guides, and also the uh, link for the student help desk. So I'll go ahead and just copy that. And then in my button where is the link, I'll paste it and click insert. And I'll drag it. Click on again to resize. And we're done with these bottom buttons. I don't want that to be the very last thing that students see as they scroll through. So I added in a see you soon, <laughs> Dr. Kelly message. And then because a lot of this design is inspired by Michelle Poklonsky Brock, including some of her uh, materials, I wanted to give some credit to that, which isn't a typical thing you do in a syllabus. But it's a web page and it seems to be easy enough. So under insert, I just clicked divider. And then I'll double click to add text. 
and I'm just, you know, hey, giving her uh, appreciation. And this is also showing my students how I am citing where I'm getting my material from, just as I would expect them to do. Now let's head back over. I'm going to click on the pages here. I'm going to go to basic syllabus information. And I want to give students the ability to be able to print the syllabus because they may need this when they're transferring and some university they're transferring to says, can I have a copy of your syllabus? So I'm clicking on the course description banner right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to insert and choose text. Let's see. Here we go, it's at the top. And here's where I'll say, hey, prefer to save or print the syllabus. The basic information is provided in a PDF format. So again, I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna adjust the size of this, and I'll add a button. Here is the name of the button, view the PDF version of the fall 2021 syllabus, basic information. And then I need to provide a link to the PDF. And this is a PDF that I have on my uh, Google Drive. So I'll go ahead and move this button and resize it. <clears throat> Last but not least, I'm going to take the YouTube welcome that I made earlier. I'll click on share. I'll copy the URL. I'll go back to my welcome page. So I'm going to Go pages here and click on welcome. Another way I can do it is along the top here. I can toggle between welcome and basic info. So on the welcome page, I'm going to add my video. So I'm going to take this welcome text and make it half the width. And then I'll double click. And this time I'm going to choose to embed by URL. Here's my URL. Here's my video. I click insert. And there we go. Now, this isn't done yet. I still want to give it a, a title. So I could call it Psych 121 uh, Syllabus Fall. I'm going to say, you know, Psych 121 Syllabus. And the site could be Psych 121 Syllabus all 2021 and then I can publish it At this point it'll become publicly viewable so I'll click publish here and now my site has been published successfully I can see what my site looks like by previewing it on the computer screen on a tablet as well as on a phone device. I can also, by going next to the publish and clicking the down arrow, click view publish site. And that's the URL that I can copy with the control C and include in messages either sent out via surf or from canvas with the welcome to the class. And here's a link to our syllabus.